instead of saying there's a whole lot of social injustice in the world today, you might say, raise your hand if you feel like there's social injustice somewhere in the world today. Okay? Then all hands go up. Now they have agreed to that. Now you can start talking about your topic. I also call this tap, tease, and transport. Tap, T-A-P, tease, and transport. If you were in my program earlier today, I said, what do you think, when I start off my story, I said, what do you think is the number one thing that stands between most people living their dreams? In other words, what I'm doing is I'm tapping into your world with a question before I ever transport you into my world with a story. Tap into their world first, and then they'll be much more interested in what you have to say. So I tapped. I said, what do you think is the number one thing that stands between most people living their dreams? You gave me all kinds of answers. Then I said, all your answers are wrong. The number one thing is not what you think. Well, what do you think the audience is thinking at that time? <clears throat> What's the number one thing? That's the tease. So I tap, and then I tease, and then I transport you into my story. Another story where I used the tease was I sat next to, or I shared a golf cart with the President of the United States of America. Well, at least you want to know something about how that happened <laughs> before you realized it was Martin Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you want to don't tell, ask. Think about that when you start your presentation. Another one is the bus. The bus should have a place on the stage. Okay, so if you start your speech here and then you go on the bus, the bus should either be over here or it should be over there. Tell me why that's important. Because you can set the stage that way. What else? That's it. So you can do what, what I like to call visual and verbal callbacks. Let's say she's, she's somewhere else in her keynote speech, but towards the end, she can say, so the next time you're on the bus, okay? Or she can ask you, maybe it's not a bus, but what is your, yeah, what is your bus? Okay, think about this for a second. There are two major reasons for moving on stage. What do you think the first one is? <laughs> she said nervousness. <laughs> to make a point. To make a point. To make a point. That actually is a reason. But there's an even more important reason. Connect. The action in your story prompts your movement on stage. Okay. So let's look at your story for a second. Yeah, but I was holding this, and I was, didn't want to move around with it. Okay. Otherwise, because I would have made motions. Right. But I was with the mic. So just so you know. Okay. That's my excuse. Yeah, that's her excuse. When, when you allow somebody to have excuses, you invite them never to change. Right? So we're going to make sure. I'll be moving. Right? You, you, look, I've given a speech once where the cord was a foot long. And it was connected to the wall. So I, was, I was like a dog. You have room, trust me. No, no excuse. You've got to move on the stage and use it. I want you to think about the bus, okay? Picture it, is it gonna be going that way? Is it gonna be going that way? And if so, where are you? Where's the person? Where's the elderly lady coming in? You gotta figure all that out. And by the way, you gotta remember where you placed everybody and everything on your stage. <laughs> because raise your hand if you know Darren LaCroix. He's the 2001 world champion of public speaking. We were doing a boot camp one day in Vegas. And we had this great guy come up and give a great presentation. And at the end of his present, or during his story, his uncle passed away and they held the funeral in the casket right here and it was very sad. Then some other things happened in the story and then later on in the story they had lunch. <laughs> I said you are literally having lunch on your uncle. You gotta remember where you placed everybody and everything on the stage. Let me test. Raise your hand if you were in my program this morning. Where on the stage was the vice president's office who kept giving me more money? Go ahead and point to him. Over here. Over here. What did he look like? A young Don Johnson. You still see him. Now write this down. This is something my coach Patricia Frick taught me before she charged me. <laughs> she said, Craig, people won't remember what you say as much as they'll remember what they see when you say it. People won't remember what you say as much as they'll remember what they see when you say it. In other words, you've got to give your characters a hint and then you've got to paint that picture of the bus. Now let me ask you a quiz here. Why wouldn't I give the young Don Johnson, which was a hint I gave about the, the vice president, why wouldn't I just go ahead and give his full description? It's 
Yeah. Not for hot driver. All right. Yeah, but there's another reason. Because people buy into what they help create. Your job is to just give a hint of to what the character looked like and let the audience fill in the rest. Because then they'll buy into that picture and that character even more. Your job is to give a hint. So I said a young Don Johnson. For my wife, I, I said she looked like what? Big brown eyes. Okay, and then you can go and fill in the rest. <laughs> I don't mean to go like that, but well, it's actually it's actually appropriate, but anyway, let's keep on moving. So, so where on the stage was my black leather sofa? Over here. Most speakers give absolutely no thought to how they move on stage, and the stage is what the audience actually sees. So the first reason for moving on stage is an action. I said to him, I gotta go home and talk to my wife about this. Where do I go? Home. So we have to figure out where everybody is on the bus, and then you go and talk to that one gentleman and so forth. Where the cookies were in the couch. And the cookies in the couch. You still see it, you smell it, you taste it. Okay? That's another point. Write this down. I didn't mean to bring it up, but write it down. Check the VAX. V-A-K-S. Write that down. V-A-K-S. Whenever you create a scene, you want to create visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and smell cues. Now, I know smell is a whole factory, but check the back, it doesn't work as well. <laughs> so check the back. So watch this. 